So if you already know Python, you can probably skip the next two lectures, but if you need a refresher or if you haven't done Python before, you want to go through these. There's a few quirky things about the Python scripting language that you need to know about. So let's dive in and uh, just jump into the pool and learn some Python by writing some actual code. All right, time for a crash course in Python. Now, like I said before, in the requirements for this course, you should have some sort of programming background to be successful in this course. You've coded in some sort of language, even if it's a scripting language, JavaScript, I don't care what it is, C++, Java, something. But if you're new to Python, I'm going to give you a little bit of a crash course here. I'm just going to dive right in and go right into some examples here. There's a few quirks about Python that are a little bit different than other languages you might have seen. So I just want to walk through what's different about Python from other scripting languages you may have worked with. And the best way to do that is by looking at some real examples. So let's dive into some code. So one last time, I'll illustrate how to actually open a notebook here on your system here. And I'm on Windows here. Refer to the previous lecture if you need instructions on a different operating system. But in general, you're going to want to open a command prompt of some sort. And on Windows, you're going to need to use the Anaconda command prompt. So find your Anaconda 3 menu in the Start menu and go to Anaconda Prompt. Wait for that to come up. And again, you need to CD into the directory where you saved all of your course materials. So for me, that was C colon slash ML course. You can do a DIR just to make sure it's all there. And once you're in the correct directory, type in Jupyter with a Y notebook. And you should see a screen like this. And from here, we want to select the Python 101 notebook because that's going to contain our little uh, tutorial in Python here. So go ahead and click on Python 101.ipynb. And you should now have a screen that looks like this. So let's dive in. If you've never seen a Jupyter notebook before, the way it works is you can click in any of these boxes of code and hit the Run button or Shift Enter, and it will execute that code right from your web browser. Let's try it with this first block. Click inside of it to select it and hit Shift Enter. Now we're just going to cover the syntax of Python here and the main ways in which it differs from other languages. So let's take a closer look at this code. One thing with Python is that white space is really important. Any nesting of code like for iteration or conditional expressions relies on the number of tabs to group code together instead of curly brackets like other languages. So here we have a list of numbers. In Python, a list is like an array or a vector in other languages. We define a list of the numbers 1 through 6 by putting them in between square brackets separated by commas. In Python, there is no character required to terminate a line. You just hit enter when you're done. Let's add 7 to the list just to prove that running this actually does something. Yeah, we've got results for 1 through 7 now. Next, we have an example of a for loop in Python. This statement iterates through the list named list of numbers, storing the current iteration in the variable number each time. A for statement does have to end with a colon like this. But now we use indents to indicate what code lives within this for block. And here we have an example of an if else clause. If the number is evenly divisible by two, we print that it's even. Otherwise, we print that it's odd. And again, we use indents to indicate what code lives within each if or else clause here. We'll remove all indents to get out of the for loop and print all done at the end. Notice that we never had to declare any variable ahead of time, nor do we have to define their types. Python is what's called a dynamically typed language. It tries to infer the data type of your variables based on how you initially use them, but internally they do have types. You can also explicitly cast variables to different types if you need to, but variables won't be recast automatically as they would in weakly typed languages. Sometimes this can lead to unexpected errors, and we'll see some of that as we go through the course. Let's move on to the next block, which just shows how to import external modules into your Python scripts. You just use the import command for this, and you can define an alias for the module if you'd like to save yourself some typing too. So here we're importing the NumPy module, so we can refer to it within our script, and we're importing it under the name NP. This lets us then use NumPy's random function by just typing np.random. And in this case, we're asking NumPy to give us 10 normally distributed random values with a given mean and standard deviation. 